Um, how do you assess the differences between how the Allies and Soviets dealt with the Jewish population post World War II? Um, that was a question sent in by Georgia. That was, um, I think, it's a really interesting question because you do talk about it um, towards the end of that paragraph. Um, so, w what kind of differences did you see with the reaction uh, from the Soviets and the um, the Allies? Yeah. Uh, so I think that the initial response of the Western Allies and the Soviets were more or less the same. So the primary goal was setting up field hospitals, kitchen kitchens, disinfection of the survivors, uh, moving, moving them from huts to the barracks to uh, keep them warm and so on. Uh, both sides also relied on the elder councils of the camps to provide information and uh, help their help to restore order and participate in the functioning of the respective camps. Uh, so that were the primary um, issues and goals at hand. Then they also both collaborated with the international um, community of the Red Cross and local medical commissions. Um, and especially in, in the first weeks in May, um, there, were, there was a typhus outbreak, so they the camps were put on quarantine and nobody was to uh, leave the camps until you know they <clears throat> uh, the, the they, typhoid was over the the, 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 the um, illness was gone yes okay uh, so the repatriation was kind of put on hold um, yes but um, under what was different so I'll start with the Soviet. Um, immediately after liberation, they were focusing on quick remedies. Yeah, so they would um, they would be nice to the people. They would provide chocolates, food from the military kitchen, etc. But uh, at the time they liberated the first camp, there was still fighting going on, and so the survivors had to wait months before proper help came by some weeks or months it really varied according to the location and situation over there uh, for the soviets there was really no space for national or ethnic sentiments uh, because of their communist regime and uh, propaganda these completely buried the issue of the holocaust they twisted the Nazi repressions and uh, remade the story of annihilation of Jews into um, enslavement of the working class to oh, suit their regime propaganda. Class reductionism. So sorry, they've just sort of said like, oh, you know, the Nazis weren't after Jews; they were after the working class people. Um, yes. Okay, that yeah, makes they, a lot of sense. Yeah, they wouldn't mention the Jews at all. Wow. Yeah. So they completely disregarded the crystal clear Jewish factor of the genocide. Uh, and therefore, um, their management of the survivors differed extremely from that of the Western Allies. And this was all due to the particular communist regime. They also acted very quickly as to the repatriation of the survivors. So is this they... after the war? Sorry, is this after the fighting was over? Or... Mm. Yes, yeah, okay. repatriation could only happen after the fighting was over. Okay, so... Um, yeah. So, so they were very quick to repatriate people. Um, yeah. That were, okay. Mm -hmm. They wanted them out of the way as fast as possible because, um, firstly, they had other plans for the liberated Nazi camps because they uh, remade them into... And... Oh, POW, uh, prisoners of war camps. Oh yeah, sorry, I misspelled that. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine, that's fine. No, 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 that's fine. Yeah. Um, don't worry about it. It's just the you know, POV. I was like, wait, what? Yeah, POW. Sorry. Yeah, don't worry. No, no, it's fine. Prisoners yeah. of war. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so also those survivors whose place of origin was liberated and later subjugated by the Soviets automatically became Soviet citizens and were thus officially unable to emigrate. And uh, so it happened very often that many families were unrighteously separated. Okay. And 
this uh, as one can expect led these people to uh, often engage in illegal activities like immigration illegal immigration yeah okay. yeah I can't I can't but, imagine what that's like sorry sorry um, I can't imagine what that's like you know it's like, oh you're a citizen of the uh, Soviet Union I was like, all right great it's like you can't go anywhere though like you're one of us like you can't leave like don't yeah, think about must, going home must have been really horrible yeah, yeah. I, can't, I can't imagine what that's like you know I, my family live in Italy it's like well that's too bad because your new home is in uh, Mother Russia or um, the Soviet Union so um, I can't mm. imagine what that was what that must have been like you know it must have been very difficult, especially for the families who were separated, you know, and ended up in different camps. Mm. So, I don't know, let's say, um, let's say the mother and the, ch or the child. Uh, the mother perished and the child ended up in, in Mauthausen. And where Austria. is that? Austria. And the father ended up in... Auschwitz or some uh, subcamp of Auschwitz. Okay. And then they would be unable to um, to meet because of the Soviet regime. If if this family was originally, for example, from Poland. I mean, in 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 honesty, they wouldn't probably know the other person's alive. Um, yes. I would yeah. imagine that there would be no way to actually know like. How many of your relatives actually survived the war? Which is, um, mm. which is crazy when you think about it like that. Yeah, the authorities and even the Jewish relief agencies they ran a track and trace um, service, so they would be looking for uh, relatives that survived. But yes, in many cases, it would take years, maybe even decades, before uh, people would be reunited, and especially. Um, it was especially difficult with the children because uh, they might have been very young. You know, they wouldn't remember where they actually came from and who their parents were. Hmm. Uh, and in, in many instances, there were um, very few children who actually uh, survived because they would be uh, put in the first line for the final solution because they were deemed undesirable obvious reasons yeah yeah i could um I could well. imagine you know they wouldn't be any good for you know what the nazis actually use them for which is slave labor um and so yeah that makes um that makes a lot of sense and so um yeah you know if we talk more s sort of about the western kind of what the uh the allies did differently to the soviets so we talked about the soviets how you know they uh, repatriate people and um, give them soviet citizenship so they couldn't actually move to maybe where they where their you know native country was um how did the allies kind of differ to that so just to clarify, they they would be able to move to their native country if the that native country was yeah in in either case they would be able to return. But if that particular country was uh, later subjugated by the Soviets, like for example Poland was, they wouldn't be able to leave the country oh, okay. to emigrate that's, that's, that's to. My bad. Yeah, no, no, okay. that's okay. okay. Just, just I would clarify. That's good. It's good clarification. Um, so okay, so how did the allies kind of differ uh, from that? Mm, yes. So the allies, um, they often stumbled upon the camps accidentally. So yes, they heard about the camps in the east, but they didn't expect there would be so many in the Western Europe as well. So they were totally unprepared for what they were about to discover. There were a heap of corpses, you know, disorderly mob of people everywhere, disease and dirt, horrible conditions. So in contrast to the Soviets, the Western administrations took a thorough care before sending the survivors home. It was crucial for them to rid them of the diseases before they could leave the camps. Uh, so they would um, cooperate with um, the Red Cross and uh, local medical commissions um, to facilitate uh, the health care. And um, they let relief organizations in, even though quite late, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, but 
they were not present in all the parts of the Soviet zones, these relief organizations. And if they were, they would be helping with the refuge to the West as well. Uh, another point is that um, due to understaffing, the Allies often, the Western Allies often had to utilize the help of German nurses who were anti Semites, which was yeah. obviously uncomfortable and did not feel like for the survivors they were rid of rid of them at all. So um, I really I haven't looked at any particular incidents in detail, but there definitely were some occasionally between the German nurses and the Jews, and I think this was another unfortunate step uh, that the Western Allies had taken. But then, uh, if you consider the bigger picture. You can see they didn't have enough medical personnel, so this was the best they could they could do. Okay, so yeah. I think it is very important to know that both sides ultimately failed to alleviate the suffering of the Jews and recognize their special status, even though each side acted on different perceptions. And this is particularly um, when we consider um, that they opted, they didn't opt for segregation of Jews from from the rest of of the people they liberated, uh, because they, it caused them great suffering. Some of those people were collaborators who helped to get their relatives or families murdered and uh, it took unfortunately it took the allies a long time before they were able to acknowledge this and act upon it and finally segregate uh, the Jews and acknowledge that they they needed a different care because of um, how differently they were treated by the Germans. How long did so, it take? Sorry, um, how long did it take for the um, the Allies to kind of understand um, their mistake? It was um, months, and uh, if not years, the the UK was um, the last to acknowledge this, and they justified their policy towards uh, this issue as um, that they did not want to uh, perpetrate the Nazi thinking of oh. Jewish segregation, but <laughs> yeah, obviously... That, yeah, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. That's a, that's a weak justification. So, yeah, um, I hope that wasn't Atli that said it, but it might have been Clement Atli that maybe said that. Um, I'm not sure, but that that is, uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty bad. Um, yeah, not good. Um, have you got anything more you want to kind of add before we move on to our next topic? Yes, that's it. Okay. Okay, no, that's fine. 